Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I'm standing out here in the yard in front of my house with this sign in the yard because guess what? The wedding dress is over, the wedding's over, the trip to Thailand's over, and you know, we've got a little French bulldog. So we obviously need a project. So this house that's behind me, which you can't really see right now, or can you? Oh, there it is. Okay. So this house behind me is the house that I bought when I first came to Illinois and it was just the right house for me at the time. But it wasn't like my dream house, but it was in a pretty primo location. So what do you do when you got like a nice location and you got two old people that got married that, you know, have to combine a whole bunch of stuff? Ah, you knock it down and you build a new one. <laughs> so why? Am I standing here telling you all about this? I wanted to do something that can help kind of sew all of the stuff that I want to make for the house. I want to kind of give you little tips and tricks about like when you build a house, all of the fun ways that you can design your sewing room, all of the things that kind of go into making our little home a haven. And I thought that you all would maybe like to go on this journey with me. I mean, heck, you like the wedding dress journey, right? So with that in mind, I want to make a temperature quilt and I need to do something where this temperature quilt commemorates some kind of time span. And at first I thought, hey, it'll be my first year of marriage. It'll be great. But no, I think it'll be perfect to make a temperature quilt along with you or not, or you can see my temperature quilt as I make it and everything. And then each week I'll kind of show the progress with the house as well and what we're doing or not doing. So if you are not familiar with what a temperature quilt is, it is a 54 block quilt. So 54 weeks, you know, there's 52 weeks in the year, but in a temperature quilt, just to make the math easy, it's 54 weeks. And then each strip in each block represents one day of the week and the temperature. So for instance, I have to go back into the archives because this sign went out in the yard on July 8th. So on July 8th is gonna be my starting day. And what was the temperature on July 8th, the high temperature? And so I'm gonna record this every day and then I've assigned different fabrics, different colors, depending on a five degree temperature range. So hopefully this will be really fun. And, uh, and yeah, so because I'm gonna do a weekly video and it's gonna be every Sunday, I might not have time to do a fully produced YouTube video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do little minis. So this is gonna go on our YouTube shorts, our Instagram reels, and TikTok. And if you haven't followed us on Instagram, check us out. It's instagram.com slash Bernina of Naperville, or better yet, our social media tag is at Bernina of Naperville. So for instance, we're on TikTok at sign Bernina of Naperville. We're on Instagram at Bernina of Naperville. So come on, let's see, let's get down and roll up our sleeves, see what fabrics I picked for this temperature quilt. Let's see what this is all about. I first heard about making a temperature quilt from my friend Erica, who contributes to the Bernina We Also blog. And I, you know, forget about temperature. I really thought that the quilt was pretty awesome looking, really modern and colorful and, and sweet. Uh, she's taught this class at the store as well. So I thought I would do like a real time temperature quilt. And then I also thought it would give an opportunity to really share, like I told you, the experiences of knocking a house down, building from scratch, and the trials and tribulations of living in an apartment while all of this happens. So hopefully you will enjoy this journey. Maybe some of you will even sympathize with me and others will just be like, oh, you poor thing getting a brand new house. Don't you ever complain. So you can see here I've recorded the 
date there we started that's where the sign went in the yard and yes I don't know the difference between uh, percentage and degree give me a break so the um, the day the sign went in the yard was July 8th now some time has passed since I did the intro but I've got week one here there's also been two weeks that have passed yes and indeed three weeks have passed. Now my excuse is that Chris and I have been moving things when it's normally my video making time and my sewing time and it took a hot minute to bring over all of the sewing stuff. Can you imagine moving your sewing hoard in this amount of time? So okay. So then week four is not complete yet because I'm making this video on July 31st. It's almost the end of the day. So I'm going to be recording my temperature every day here, or not my temperature, we're going to record the uh, temperature in the Chicagoland area, um, but I'm going to hold on to this one. And I recommend that you print several of these sheets. You're going to need ultimately 54 of them, and you can find them right there on Erica's We Also blog post under How to Make a Temperature Quilt, Step 1. And of course, I do have a little handout that's in the description of this video, and I'll have links to all of these important things for you as well. So some of you are probably asking, where did you find these historic temperatures? Well, it's pretty easy. It's wonderground.com slash history. And basically that's weather underground and there's lots of historic weather details that you can find there. But once you go to wonderground.com slash history, you can put in your city and your state or your zip code or whatever, and then just pick the date that you want from the drop down menu and click on view. Then you can go to another date and click on view. It's really important that you click on view each time or nothing changes. So another thing that you're probably wondering is about the fabrics that I chose. Well, I have chosen them and I have a little cheat sheet and I'm keeping a spreadsheet on my computer of all of these things. And also in case I can't read my handwriting, I have a spreadsheet of all of the temperatures and everything like that as well. So here's the printout and I changed my chart versus Erica. Erica's, she picked 15 different colors. I have 17 because I thought, you know, it's been getting colder and hotter here. So it has been going over 100 degrees, um, you know, in the summer. So I did 100 plus is purple wine then 95 to 99 is very berry and then so forth so right now luckily we've been sitting mostly in this burnt orange to spice berry category right here but you know as the temperature dips our colors will change so these are my 17 colors that are going in to the temperature quilt and you can see i have the little temperature ranges right there so when i pick when I write down the temperature, 76, and then I look at my chart, 76 is burnt orange, I can write it in right here. But in my spreadsheet, I not only keep all of this information, but then I have a little color chip of the color right there. So here are the colors. And now I've taken a half a yard of each of my colors. And you can see, hopefully, you know, I don't wish 100 degrees on anyone, but I am hoping to be able to add that to the to the quilt so for right now I'm not going to pre-cut all of these but I'm going to cut a few strips off of everything cut them to the right length and then put them in little plastic baggies because as you can see as we get into these red colors they're very close in color and I want to make sure that I don't get any mixed up so these temperature sheets that we're working with are actually the size of the block because we are gonna do this paper piece style. So if we take a ruler and measure, these finish at one and a quarter inches. So if I were to cut these at one and three quarters, then 
they would be just the right size. But you know with paper piecing, you always have to cut it a little bit larger than you anticipate. So I'm gonna be cutting two inch strips from all of my fabrics eventually. But I'm gonna stick with my warm palette for right now because we are still in summer. So let's go ahead and take apart all of these pieces and cut them. I'm gonna do two two inch strips to get started. So I made a copy of this and I'm just gonna cut this little piece out and keep this with my purple wine color and so forth. This way, it's just a way for me to help keep things straight because I do tend to forget things as I work on long projects. When I do each color, I have my main color that I'm not cutting into here. This is my 100 degrees plus. I cut two strips that are two inches, and then from those strips, I cut them into eight inches long. So that's gonna be plenty of fabric to cover my rectangles that are gonna be on all of my different blocks for each week. So once I have my pieces cut out, I'm gonna start week one. And I'm gonna work upside down like this, and I need to grab three burnt oranges, a London red, two undeniably reds, and a spice berry. So we'll start with our three burnt oranges, which I have right here. I can take this off and grab three strips. And I keep making sure that I add my label on here because I will forget. And then I need one London red, two undeniably red, and one spice berry. And now the way paper piecing works is we're just going to take a pin or maybe even two pins and we're going to line this up just so everything is tucked in under that line. So that's our seam line. That red line is our seam line. So I'm going to make sure that that's covered. And we also want to make sure that the top edge is covered. So that looks pretty good. And then, then one next to it is London Red, which is this piece right here. So now we're going to line this up with it as well. And a glue stick is also good to temporarily adhe adhere this. You can even put, if you choose to do pins rather than an adhesive, it's better to pin from this side when you do your final pinning because you're gonna be sewing from the writing side. So now I've turned that over and I'm gonna stitch right on the red line and then I'm gonna press and flip and continue to go down my piece from top to bottom. I'm choosing a orangey kind of cotton thread. I've got the same thread in the top and bottom because I think this is gonna blend better with all of these different colors, or at least while my colors are in this very warm palette. So as the temperatures change, I'm probably gonna to change to maybe a medium color blue. I also have my number 20 open toe foot, and this is really nice because it allows me to really see that line and exactly how I'm stitching on this line. And one more thing is you want to decrease your stitch length to about 1.8 and that's simply because we wanna make sure we can perforate the paper so that it will tear easily when all of our blocks are complete. So 
so now you can see I've stitched and I'm going to flip over and press and then if I that seam allowance is a little fat right there but I'm still covering my area that I need to you can see here that it's totally covered if you were nervous and you didn't cut your pieces wide enough we could certainly fold this back and take a quarter of an inch and cut our fabric even and then place our new piece and to get a nice crease on your piece you can use like a postcard or i'm using my hot hammer <laughs> to get that and then you're going to just line a straight edge here with your quarter of an inch and trim just a little bit extra because i cut these pieces just a little bit wider than we needed to so now my next color is undeniably red. Undeniably red is a darker red, this color, and now that's gonna go into position here. We're gonna turn it over and we're gonna stitch this seam again. So we've completed row one, row two, and row three is covered. And I'm gonna do that little trick again where I take a flat edge and fold on our seam line. Take our quarter of an inch and measure that up. And now this is under undeniably red and we have another undeniably red that we're gonna line up. Now, normally in the world of quilting, you wouldn't line two colors up together, but this is perfectly fine because each one of our blocks is gonna have the same amount of seams. So we're just gonna put two of the same color together like that because the high temperature was the same for those two days in a row. Once you get a week completed, we're gonna turn our block over and we're gonna trim on the outermost piece on the outermost line that is and now I'm going to be cutting off week one here so I just need to make sure I know now I'm, I know that I'll start on Jan on July the 8th however I just because I sometimes ignore the obvious I'm gonna make another notation on here that this is my week one. Okay, so there, there it is. And I'll just write it there somewhere. All right, I'm behind, so I've got a few more of these to make. <laughs> and don't forget that we are gonna post a new update. I'm gonna do my best on Sundays, maybe not every Sunday, but Sunday evenings on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. So I picked a different uh, larger numbering system here for the blocks after I finished the three that I have that are complete so I clearly know what they are. And also I just want to point out that some of you are going to be like, hey Gail, you've got some like antiquated tools here with the hot hammer and the ruler, but with other updates, I'm going to be using my add a quarter ruler that I normally use for paper piecing. And uh, it's just that we're camping here, ladies and gentlemen, and I just forgot to pack those rulers there at my old house. So we'll put those in action next time. 
All right, so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. So I hope you follow us on all of those platforms, Instagram, TikTok, you know, and even check out our YouTube shorts. Uh, and in the meantime, I got a lot of planning to do. I've got countertops to pick out. I've got a basement to think about. We've got designers to meet with, builders, project managers, you know, the whole bit. So I hope you stick with us. I hope you enjoy watching me sew in my new sewing room in the apartment that we're gonna be living in for a year. And then of course, I hope that you check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. <sighs> Happy building. <laughs>